guys and welcome back to Marie's Acrylic and Gel Nails. Um, today I am going to talk about chronic pain. Um, so it's not a nail tutorial. So guys, if you're thinking that it is, then you can switch off now. I'm doing this um, for a friend of mine on here. Um, because I went and did um, what they call the PACE for Persistent Pain program a few years ago to help me with understanding my pain and, and grieving and all sorts of things. So to explain pain, um, what is it? There are two types, there's acute pain and chronic pain. If acute, acute pain is um, short-lived, anything from a few seconds to a few weeks, it tell us, tells us that we're injured, like we've knocked our funny bone. It is a warning that something is wrong and is necessary for survival. People born with an inability to feel pain usually suffer from numerous cuts, burns, breaks, etc. because their body fails to warn them that they're in danger. Persistent pain or chronic pain is pain that continues for a long time, at least six months. It's better or worse on some days than others, but the enduring and persistent nature of it makes it chronic. If you are participating in this program, you have been coping with persistent pain and the, this is a manual that I got from them. Um, I have a spare one which I'll actually be sending to uh, Rita Micro. If you haven't um, seen Rita's channel or um, anything, she does nails and glitter mixes and she's a wonderful, wonderful lady. Um, there's two types of um, pain. There's neoreceptive pain, which um, occurs in the skin, um, or tissue, muscle, connective tissues. Um, it's damage that doesn't heal properly and causes pain. It includes things like arthritis and wounds that become infected. And there's neuropathic pain. Um, this pain is due to damages of nerves, spinal cords, or brain. While the tissues may have healed, the damage to the nerves can linger on and be sensitive. It is a sh described as a sharp, shooting and stabbing pain. The area affected can be sensitive and can be gently, general, oh sorry, it can be, the area affected can be very sensitive to even the gentlest sensation. Um, I have a huge scar, I'll just stand up a little bit, um, sorry, but um, I have a huge scar that runs down this side of my body and just this light touch on that scar, I have like pins and needles now shooting through me, it, it's like electricity, um, it's just horrible and that's the nerve damage on that scar. Um, the affected area can be very sensitive to the gentlest sensation for her. That this reason any movement, even sleeping, can be uncomfortable. Persistent chronic pain can involve both types of pain, um, but if pain persists after the tissue has healed, it's more likely to be neuropathic. In, ter in terms of management, it does. It's not so much that you can have surgical procedures to um, fix this type of pain, you actually have to learn to manage the pain and realise that pain is now going to be a part of your life. Now, um, the pain clinic I attend works on the gateway theory, where nerve when damage to the tissue occurs, chemicals are released to stimulate nerves to send the message to the brain. This message is direct 
to the spinal cord where it passes through a gate mechanism on the way to the brain. When the gate is open, more pain signals get through and than when it's closed. Therefore, the gate is open, we experience pain more intensely. When the gate is shut, we experience less pain rather than being completely open or shut. It is usually open to a varying degrees. The degrees in which the gate is open and shut is determined by two factors. The pattern of the signal sent to the gate in the spinal cord um, and messages sent from the brain to the gate in the spinal cord. Um, so, to give an example of the gateway theory, um, let's talk about, I've just hit my elbow on my desk, I immediately rub it. That rubbing sensation doesn't fix it, but immediately it sends a signal to my brain to close the gate because that rubbing is making it feel better. Um, and that's what pain clinic is about, is about trying to stop the pain reaching the brain um, or closing that gate. Myths about persistent pain. Pain is always a warning of damage or harm. Um, no, because it's been actually done by then and you know, as we've talked about, it can be temporary or it can be chronic. Um, if I'm in pain, I must rest. So wrong. Um, it, rest can lead to, they have a, a motto, use, if you don't use it, you lose it. It can lead to boredom, it can lead to depression. Um, so it's very important that if you're in pain, that you still live life. My chronic, my condition is going to become worse. Um, persistent or chronic pain is not a disease. People who exper experience episodes of chronic pain but generally live for long periods m with no significant de deterioration to their physical um, condition um, worry about the deterioration is more harmful to the state of mind. And um, basically, we'll put it this way, my pain when this all first happened was not as bad as what it is now. But what put me into the position that I am now is I decided to go and have some adhesions divided. Um, and adhesions are long string. They have really no give in them whatsoever, but the little bit they do, it's like a rubber band. You pull it, but it doesn't bounce back. It just, and once you pull it, oh my God. So they decided, because um, my adhesions pull up my bowel and kink it, so that causes all sorts of nightmares. And they went, well, we'll go in and we'll divide them. now. The doctors were torn about doing this and the doctor who didn't want me to do this in the end has is right. It should never have been done because six weeks later my adhesions had grown back a hundred times worse than what they originally were and my pain was greater. Had it been left alone, I wouldn't be in the position I am now. now that's not their fault, that's no one's fault. I was given the risks and I chose that, you know, because when they say they were going to divide them, I could have been left pain free. I, you know, I, I could have had a year, six months, those six weeks. Oh my God, they were absolutely fantastic. I don't regret that it's getting your head around it afterwards. There must be a cure for my pain. There may not be a cure for your pain, um, but how you can teach yourself to live with chronic pain. Um, the doctors may suggest um, several different ways to treat it and they may be successful, they may not. The thing is improving your quality of life. It's all in my body. Well, 
Pain is physical, social and um, an emotional experience. A football player in pain on the field will react differently to his pain when he's in the middle of a game and he's faced then faced with an operation to help what's caused his pain. Medication will relieve my pain. What medication does is makes um, and this is a different subject altogether, but they talk about pain and being in waves. So when you are taking medication, the idea of, of the medication is to flatline your pain because when your pain's all over the place, you do not cope with it. I can tell you um, they work on a score of zero pain to 10 being the worst. Even at a level five for me, as long as it's a constant five, I'm quite happy, you know, I, I can live with that. When my pain is all over the place, I cannot live with that at all. It's all in my head. Well, yes and no. Um, well, it is a physical thing, pain, and it's there. There is an emotional side to having chronic pain as well. But realistically, it's not, but it can make you feel like you're going crazy. Um, and you need to, you know, you need to, the professionals to help you learn to cope with it. The next one is nothing works, so why should I try? Well, living with persistent chronic pain, I can, I can vouch for this one. It wears you down. Um, it makes you dependent on others. It makes you feel like you have no control over life. Seeing yourself as a person who can be positive in coping strategies, taking control of your pain is better beneficial to your life. Maybe being involved in your own care, you may have some strategies that may not have worked straight away, so you stop. Persistence is important. Um, and again, on that, did I feel all those things? Oh, shit, yeah. But doing this um, PACE course, I grieved it, I got over it, and I'm a fighter. You tell me I can't do something, and I'm going to say, screw you, and prove you wrong. This is still a learning curve for me, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm never going to let my pain win. It does not own me. What's the use? Well, the strategies that they teach you are not always successful. Everyone is different. And sometimes you do, you fail. It's a natural course of life. And you may not feel like you're getting where, but you've got to try and try again. And remember that managing your pain um, requires a lifestyle changes that brings long-term results rather than short-term answers. And that is true. Um, you really have to um, keep persisting. I have my bad days. I call it grumpy bear syndrome and you know I'm not perfect at this and I, I don't claim to be so please do not think I am preaching to you. What I'm trying to do is just show you a little bit of what they teach me. They have a big session on grieving and loss and I think that for me was the most, I found this course very, very um, emotional. Very, very hard to face some of the truths and stuff like that within it. Um, making the most out of ex um, pleasant experiences, dealing with sleep problems, oh my god. Tell you what, I walked into hospital and I wasn't sleeping. I, god, I didn't know what sleep was, was anymore and it was driving me insane. I now sleep, it's fantastic and I love my sleep. Um, sleep hygiene, ways of thinking about pain, Styles, unstyle, styles of unhelpful thinking that um, changing how your, your thoughts and your emotions are, letting go of the pain. There is so much in this book, um, exercises, 
physio, occupational stuff. It is fantastic. Um, just to be honest with people, um, my checklist that I had to do on my sleeping, not that you can see it, and I have notes written on the back of it. Things I can do before bedtime. Reduce my caffeine. No, I have a coffee still before I go to bed. Avoid cigarettes. You still do that. Bedtime routine. I do have one of them. Write down worrying and nagging thoughts. I do that. Only go to bed when I'm drowsy. I do that. And get up the same time each day. Mm, not so good at that. I like to sleep in. Things I can change about my sleep environment. Take a glass of water to bed. Comfortable temperature, reduce light, reduce noise, good ventilations, comfortable mattress. I went out and spent four grand on a mattress. I tell you, it was the best investment I did. I cannot feel anything going on in the mattress next to me. Heat, uh, heat pack works for me. Um, and then it talks about things I, I can do if I cannot initially get to sleep or I wake up. Uh, relaxing my deep breathing techniques, resting, listening to music, changing my unhelpful thoughts, um, imagining lock box for worrying um, and what else can I do? Well, I can talk to my fam family, friends, support, um, my GP, or speak to a psychologist for therapy about sleeps and emotions. Um, what did I write down? Sleep hygiene, interrupted sleep other than pain, no change in routine.